Good afternoon, Seahawks. I hope you're all having a fantastic week and are as excited as we are to head out of studio to explore on this week's episode. From seawalls to sandbags, we will be exploring the excited world of erosion control at our very own Wrightsville and Curry beaches. Stay tuned because we will also be learning about a very rare natural phenomenon that's sure to blow you away. I'm Maddie Peterson. And I'm Ashley Brooke Daniels. And you're watching Dub Geographic. As defined by National Geographic, erosion is the geological process in which earthen materials are worn away and transported by natural forces such as wind or water. An important thing to remember when erosion is that it is a completely natural process and will inevitably occur at any beach. However, with a huge portion of the world's population living near the coast, erosion becomes more like a battle between nature and landowners. Over time, we have developed different ways to combat erosion, many of which can be found quite close to home. One of these methods is beach renourishment. This involves depositing sand back onto the beach after areas that have been mostly, if not completely, eroded away. Our very own Wrightsville Beach utilizes beach renourishment, with the most recent project occurring in February of last year. This method is the most visually appealing, as it restores the beach. However, renourishment is costly and damaging to wildlife. Regulations for renourishment include using sand that matches the sand on the beach. This means that the sand is pulled from offshore, a multi-billion dollar task that needs to be redone every few years. Another piece of that problem is that it deposits tons of sand on the beach and buries species that make their homes in the intertidal zone. Part of North Carolina law is that renourishment can only occur at certain points of the year to ensure that it does not interfere with biological activities, such as sea turtles hatching. About a half hour south of Wrightsville, you can find our next erosion barrier sitting across from the Fort Fisher Civil War Museum. This colossal creation is a seawall, a literal pile of rocks that prevents erosion from stopping waves from reaching the shore. Usually, it is illegal in North Carolina to install a permanent erosion control structure. However, this hunk of junk is allowed because it serves to protect a historical site. The purpose of this law is that erosion control structures increase the amount of erosion elsewhere on the coast. In the case of the seawall, erosion increases on either side of it from the waves being magnified. You can already see how this has affected the beach south of the seawall. Similar to the seawall, sandbags are a non-permanent solution for erosion that are only allowed for five years until a better solution is presented. A little north of Fort Fisher seawall, you can find some sandbags in front of the Riggins condos that have been there since 1985, clearly longer than the five-year limit. Man-made structures are not the only way to prevent erosion. Mother Nature has some tricks up her sleeve as well. One of these is a buildup of coquina rocks. It looks ordinary enough. However, each rock is limestone composed of deposited shells that were cemented over time. Coquinas are incredibly rare and only found in a few locations around the world, including our very own Curry Beach. The coquina outcrop serves as one of the only natural erosion barriers in North Carolina. Next time you're looking to go to the beach, think about heading down to Curry to check it out, perhaps even spotting a tide pool or two. Hey Seahawks, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode on erosion. Right now we're actually in a natural maritime forest. It's the wind barrier between the ocean that's right behind us. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maddie Peterson. And I'm Ashley Brooke Daniels. And see you next week Seahawks. <laughs>